In the early morning dark, a hundred miles off the South Carolina coast, the tiny 58-foot big eye grinds out their last trip of the season. Shark back here, let's go. Keep him coming. Pull it, pull it, pull it. Keep him coming. Captain Chris Chomps Hansen is desperate to turn his second trip into a winner. A risky boat-to-boat -boat transfer of bait bought him two more days of fishing. Now he has to make it count. Come on, Woody, what are you doing? Zone out! Shark! Shark! There's sharks. Bye-bye. I can't stand the dick. Slippery as hell. Greenhorn Don came aboard at the invitation of Chomps. Chomps is my, you know, one of my best friends. We grew up together. And right now, times are hard. Got a one-year-old baby. I need to make some money. And I told him I needed a job. And he told me to pack my things. <laughs> Don learned hard lessons over the season. Somebody pay attention to Don. He ain't got a clue what's going on back there. I just need more practice. What are you doing? I didn't think it was going to be yeah, this yeah. hard. One lesson nearly killed him. Hold up. Oh. Oh. Get overboard. Desperate to stay and keep his job, Don declined a medevac and stitched his own wound. It's about long hours, hard work. It gets real rough out there, you know. But also, I've been gone for a long time, you know. I've never been away from my wife or my baby this long. And uh, it's just it's pretty hard, you know. It's whatever I gotta do to keep them going is what I've gotta do. If that means coming out here. Three hundred hooks in, this haulback hasn't even paid for bait. Yeah, I think I still a fish. The keeper. Hundred hooks turned the day around. Nice fish. And put over a thousand pounds on the boat. But with only a day's supply of bait, tomorrow will be the crew's last shot to cash in. Getting our last set ready. We had uh, 15 fish today for our 10th set. Hopefully, we catch a bunch of fish tomorrow. A little bigger pig cake than we're getting. Got so far. Whatever we catch these last couple sets, whatever we've been putting in the hole, comes down to money in our pockets. 650 miles to the north, just outside the fishing town of Barnegat Light, New Jersey, is the Bjorn II. Veteran Captain Linda Greenlaw is limping back to port after a disastrous second trip. We're about uh, seven miles outside of Barnegat Light Inlet. After, uh, you know, this last many weeks of what we've endured, I think we can, I think we can get to the dock all right. The final problem that broke the Bjorn to this trip was nearly losing Deck and Dave. We took that away, my I think he's on the verge of breaking if he hasn't already broken. It truly feels like he could have just lost his life and uh, never seen his daughter again. 
Dave's safe in his bunk now. But this season got off to a bad start and fell apart from there. First time I've ever been seasick. Linda gave him the chance to get off the boat. If you're going to be moaning and groaning, I'd rather have someone else. I'm in. Now the question is, will Dave ever fish for swords again? Yes. Everyone's really worried about him. He needs to get some help. Dave wasn't Captain Linda's only problem this season. Oh. I don't know, you're part of your fingers. Yeah, we had a lot of reason, a lot of reason to come in, you know. My finger was the nail in the coffin. We really weren't catching any fish either. You want anything out of the galley, you gotta wait another year. That's it. Done. Finished. Close. <laughs> I don't blame her. Paramedics are waiting on shore to take Linda to the hospital. I did it basically uh, yesterday morning. Uh, I got jammed um, in the block. I felt sick when I did it. Right, yeah. I, I yeah. 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 But Linda's not going anywhere until her boat is secured and offloaded. You get to take a first class ride in an ambulance? Nah, I'm not going in an ambulance. Okay. okay. It's stupid. If, if it was the finger was cut point. off, it would make a difference of putting right. it back on. Yeah, but no, if it's, it's all there. Mangled, you know, it isn't going to make that much difference. But you definitely got to go to the hospital, at least, like you said, to get it They'll cleaned up and yeah, a Yeah, that's what I want to do. Or see if you need a child. The last offload is a time for families to reunite. Well, we're loading the last of our fish. And my daughter, Soraya, here, taking the tally for me. I got a boo-boo on my finger. Ready. You got a knife for her? 113 swords, nice fish. With a small second trip, the crew makes just $7,000 for the season. But for Dave, it's not about the money anymore. I was happy I stuck it out up until my worst nightmare came true yesterday. Come in! Thought that I'd never get a chance to see my daughter again. If they hadn't heard me, I, I don't know what would have happened. I took that wave, I'm done! I'm done! It's the closest I've ever been to dying. Coming up, Scotty gets a last big score. Bluefin! Bluefin! And later, Chomps takes a bite out of Don. We are at the dock, and you are me up. Go home. Don't come back. A hundred miles off the Massachusetts coast is the 90-foot Eagle Eye 2. Jogging up to the beeper here, getting ready to haul the gear. This season, Captain Scotty Drabinowitz and his crew have experienced feast. Good man, good man. And famine. The gear drifted into the lobster traps. It's all collapsed on itself here now. With one day left to the season, Scotty has gambled and thrown his lines dangerously close to the lobster pots in the area. Yeah, the lobster gear kind of runs right along like this. So, we'll be just down below it. Hopefully our gear will just stay out of the drag and stay out of the traps. Last night, Scotty's crew set out over 40 miles of line with a thousand baited hooks. The free-floating lines sometimes drift into the stationary lobster traps. The last time Scotty gambled near the lobster pots, he lost $5,000 worth of gear. They're, they're tight. Well, that's gonna break. And nearly took out one of his men. Ugh. Tangled up gear in the lobster pots and still be a nightmare. Lobster pot. Only 30 hooks in, a high flyer buoy marking the lobster pots gets dangerously close to the main line. They're right behind them now, Skipper. It's right there on our stern. What is the flyer? Yeah, you'll see it now. You're hauling that way. See it? That's broke off, I think. You gonna try and grab her? Yeah. Lobster bars, watch her. All right, dig it here. Get a little more. Scotty's dodged a bullet. I got it. All right, Skipper. How you going? This time, it's the lobster fisherman's gear that snapped off the line. 
This is what they use to pick up uh, and find out where the gear is. And this is what you gotta watch when you pick it up. This comes along the side of the boat, and it's bobbing up and down with the swells. You cut the nose, slice the nose right off, you know? just like your razor blade. You put a good many stitches in your head if you got it. Clear of the lobster it's traps, there. it's time to see if anything is on the line. I look like a swordfish. Swordfish? No. Blue dog. Oh. We got a lot of empty hooks here. Catching a few blue dogs. Still got a lot of hooks left, so hopefully we'll catch a couple of fish. Longliners often talk about finding a sign of fish. When things are really slow, any sign will do. Oh, what is it? Oh, yeah. Wow, man. <laughs> I know when a bird land on you or nearby you, call it, and they call it um, a message they come to tell you. Go catch some fish, you know, fish are wrong. That's the only message I want to know. <laughs> And just like that, the line goes tight. Good fish, fish on. Good fish. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, baby, make it to the boat. That's all we ask. Up. Hold him. Take the boat a little bit. Yeah. That's a fish. Yeah. Swordfish. Yeah. You got it up? Yeah, baby. Let's see it. One hundred. Swordfish. Almost out of time and out of hooks, Captain Scotty and his crew pull off an 11th hour money-making set. Well, you know, we started off pretty slow, had a good section there, we had uh, four nice fish. Well, my crew is pretty good, my gang's pretty good. They know things here, change and just one haul back. I'm not going to give up, they're not going to give up. Just off the coast of Barnegat Light, New Jersey, is the Francis Ann. We're in the home stretch now. Just going by the lighthouse, a couple hundred more yards to go, and be home to be home. In an epic final day of fishing, <laughs> Captain Rick Mears and his crew of young guns oh, turned baby. a losing trip into a winner. One, two, three. Yeah! Woo, come on. Now, the final offload of the season will determine how much money goes into their pockets. It's a pretty long trip, but it's good to be home. How long? Instead of sitting in the captain's seat, Slick spent this trip on the back deck. I don't consider it a demotion. If it is a demotion, I'm not going to lose any sleep over it. It's Rick's call. Now, he's in control of making the boat the check, so now... The tables are turned a little bit here. Owner Rick Mears took over after a money losing trip. Now you're not happy, but um, I'm going to run the boat next trip. Everybody it was a well needed break from the high stress of the wheelhouse. Get the out of there. Open your eyes, pull your head out of your. All right, Lem? You're an idiot. That's not my decision this time. It's more on Rick's shoulders than my shoulders now. Now, Slick doesn't know if he'll ever get back to the helm. First fish coming out of the hole, nice marker. Buy U.S. fish. Still have all the colors, sperm in the pool. Solid the rock. Triple marker. 300 plus pounder right here. Nice one. One, two, three. Yeah, four, five, six. <laughs> Seven, eight, nine. Big fish. I mean, it was a long trip. 
was a success. Absolutely, it was a success. A little longer than I would have liked, but um, hey, sometimes you gotta just stick it out, grind it out, put the time in, you will be rewarded. With the fish off the boat, today's total is 14,300 pounds. That gives each crew member over $15,000 for the six week season. Good trip, man. I had a lot of fun this trip. I really did. Probably definitely the best crew I ever worked with. Between me, Slick, and Danny on that, it was like a cake yeah. for us. Going out fishing is like going to Vegas or going to Atlantic City. Put it all on black and hope for the best. I mean, it is. It's hard. You know, like I said, anytime we can go out, we can either not catch anything or fall. We know we might not ever come home. We don't know what goes on out there. But we can't dwell on it. Tomorrow's another day. Whether tomorrow Slick will be a deckhand or a captain is the final piece of business for the season. In the fishing town of Barnegat Light, New Jersey, the fall season has ended for the Francis Ann. But Slick, the former captain, needs to know where he stands for next season. Hope you all feel like I stepped on your toes, you know. I just felt like um, you were stressing and, you know, I know how November is. I mean, the weather, the fishing, and you take the load off your shoulders. When Slick had the boat out, you know, it was, things were tough. The fish weren't biting and the weather was getting bad. and. Yeah, you know, it, it started to get to him. And, you know, by the time he got back to the dock, you know, he was, he, you know, he started to lose cool a little bit. Get the f out of there! Nice job, f Will you f head down your stupid f people? I knew the next trip wasn't going to be any easier, you know, going out with the weather. And so I made a decision that, you know, I was going to run the boat for that trip and put Slick back on deck. Whatever, you're stressing and I stress too, so he just whatever. Stress a little better than I do. Yeah. <laughs> I've been with Rick on the French Sand for 13 years now. Rick has more patience than I do, like grinding this trip out. I mean, we put 14 sets in the same spot. In the end, it paid off, it really did. There's some fish around next month, the water still looks all right. What do you think? You are, I, mean, yeah. I got all the confidence in the world, didn't you? So. Thank you, I appreciate it. I try. Slick's my right hand man. I got no problem whatsoever letting Slick take the boat out. And to have somebody that you can trust with it, that's a big deal. Thanks for the awesome uh, trip, man. Right, Thanks man. for everything. Anytime you want to run that boat, feel free. The keys are in it. Thank you. Appreciate <laughs> it. It's awesome. A hundred miles off the Carolina coast is the Big Eye. Good morning. Top of the morning. Captain Chomps is working on borrowed time and borrowed bait. You gotta do what you gotta do to make your checks. Two extra days of fishing has helped the big eye cover expenses, but Chomps is still only one step ahead of the bill collectors. I will try my best to pay the bill. Like I say, I got $20,000 for y'all, and I can't give you no more until I go make it. Fuel prices went to high, went so high. Uh, we just couldn't afford to make it, so I had to just go on the road, and that's what I've been doing for the last three years. And I've barely survived, but I have survived. So. After 20 days of frustration, the big guy started finding the fish and turning a profit on this trip. While most captains are powering down, Chomps wants to run in, offload, and head right back out to sea. His crew has other ideas. I am ready to get this last set over. Can't wait to put my feet on dry land. A few more fish in the hole, good to go. First fish of the day. That's the keeper. Get me. Small 45 pounder this morning. First fish, come on. Yeah, look at that. Nice, huh? Not a keeper. The keeper. Another 45 pounder. Come on. Come on. Arr! Second fish is bigger than the first fish. Keeper sore. Come on. Five. First section, 80 five pounds. Fish. Chomps is back on the fish. He comes around. Bring him around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, get you another. Yeah, I got him. 
brisket. In the last two hours, the big guy adds a thousand pounds of fish to their trip. What was that, Keller? Marker or what? It's definitely a marker. It's a bad time to stop, but once again, they're out of bait. I got the last beeper of the trip coming in the boat. With the fish in the hole, the crew prepares to head home. The final hoorah. We're we'll scrubbing the boat so we can get off a nice clean deck. Call it a day. Last day, best fishing we've seen. I wish we'd have done this four days ago in a row or so, but we'll take what we can get. Everybody always gets perked when they get close to the dock. That is never my concern on how you act when you get close to land. It's my concern is how you act and how you do your job fishing. I know everybody else is happy and all excited about going in today, but uh, I'm not. Because we ain't really got that much fish on the boat. And we're going to go in right when the fish is starting to get good. Chomps is heading in, but he doesn't know if he'll have a crew when he heads back out. I want to go home and see my family real bad. Be right. home for Thanksgiving. Chomps wants to turn right around and leave real quick. And I don't know if, you know, if it's going to pan up. Well, whatever. I'm not going to stay here for three days. Hit me up on my Christmas trip. I'll be done with it. Good. southeast of New Bedford, Massachusetts, is the Eagle Eye 2. Last haul back here today. A handful of hours will be done. Nice shot. Beautiful. Yeah, there's a big day for me today. I smell some swordfish. It's coming. Uh-oh. Scotty and his veteran crew are topping off their fish hold and heading home. Ready to get home. Back to my girlfriend. Back to my family. Back to surfing. Last day. Can't come soon enough. But the fish keep coming. Oh, little bluefin. Just a little. Got him. Bluefin. 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 Woo. Catching a bluefin is like hitting the mother load. This beauty can bring in as much as four grand on the open market. Got the bluefin tuna. This one. Got a nice tuna. There you go. Damn it. She's hefty. Like 200 pounds. Or more. Are right, you ready? But to be legal, a bluefin must measure at least 40 inches. He's measuring it to see if it's legal. He's a legal one. Yeah! Probably 225. Get money in the pocket. And now there's more money on the line. Big guy. Oh, it's a tuna, yep. Tuna can swim up to 40 miles an hour. Wants to go from bad. And this one is giving Tommy Fox a run for his money. Oh. Two months, it's time for the Eagle Eye 2 to shut it down. Homer down. <laughs> I'm happy. Everybody's smiling. The captain's happy. There it goes. Last fish. Last set out. Last haul back. Last everything for the fall season. All over. That's a wrap, people.
220 miles to the southwest is the fishing village of Barnegat Light, New Jersey. All right, get a table by the fireplace. Before heading home for the holidays, the Bjorn 2 crew sits down to a final meal together. The menu is predictable. Thank you. Swordfish. Did get any fresher than that, Harry? As soon as you get back, I already want to go back. I've seen worse weather, but I've not seen that degree of weather for so many days in a row. And those storms hit up there, one right after the other. It was four in a row. Yeah, unbelievable. I'm seizing. <laughs> I will say, in 21 years, I've never been seasick. And I'm now you know. Seasick, but anybody I've got knows. total sympathy for anyone who's been yeah. seasick before. Now this trip didn't make me seasick yet, so I think I could probably make through any, make it through anything. I think I probably still right. Get, I still didn't get sick on this trip. So well, you're not human. I'm not right at any <laughs> yeah. anyway. Tell you what, it was scary for me. I am, um, here I am up there getting my finger patched up. I hear all this commotion on the deck, and I'm thinking, wow, sounds like they're catching a big eye or something. A little screaming going on back there. And I see Dave coming over the stern. That's friggin' scary stuff. I thank God that Tim was there to grab a hold of me. I thank Tim and everyone else who were back there to help me. And I know my daughter thanks you. Thanks, Tim. Glad you're with us, though. I've seen guys come on the boat, they're all gung-ho, and then the reality of sleep deprivation, unbelievable physical labor, um, being away from home, all of that starts to set in. And some people can handle it, some people cannot. You know, there's no shame in saying, this is not for me. It's not for everyone. It's not for most people. I can't blame it on Dave. I hired him. Surviving the Grand Banks together forges a bond that's hard to break. Good times, bad times, we're all here to tell the stories. Cheers. Yeah, cheers. Beginning of this season, I was feeling a little unsure of myself as far as my fishing ability. This was kind of a season to prove that I could still catch fish, or if I couldn't, I was going to hang it up. This season, we put enough fish on the boat to make a small check. We get in, we unload these beautiful fish, the prices are up. We're going home with money in our pockets. That's a good feeling. In the little southern port of Cherry Point, South Carolina, comes the big eye. We got him quick. We could have got him a lot quicker, but that's about all the crew can handle. After a 20-day trip, Captain Chomps has run out of supplies. Not a pretty sight at all. I just assumed he'd be going that way right now, not this way. I just assumed he'd be going fishing. I don't get my beer, I'm gonna be mad. I'm ready to get off his boat. Why are you running? I wanna get her done, man. Get her done, that's the name of the game. I can see land now, man, I'm happy. I don't even know what month or what year it is. I've been out here so long. <laughs> Still deeply in debt, Chomps needs to offload and head back out to sea. But he may be going back out short-handed. I'm now. I ain't got a way to go. I just need somebody to go do my trip, man. You know, I don't want to miss this room. Me and Woody going to go out short-handed. I just got me and Woody, really, in case everybody else is gone. Just helping Chomps out like, as a friend. Short-handed, so I helped him out. I didn't call him looking for a job. He asked me if I wanted to go. I guess they want to spend Thanksgiving with their family. They don't stop the boat just because the crew leaves. We'll get another crew and go on about our business. That's the way that works. We're doing great. We'll be long now. We'll be stepping on solid ground. That was a long trip. 
Ready to, ready to be done with it. After steaming 4,600 miles of open ocean, the big eye hits the dock. The old gal's been good to me. She took care of me one more season. So that's two years in a row she's been in the Grand Banks. It's not the best trip the boat's ever had, but it isn't to the green, and it is a positive trip, and the guys will at least make $100 a day for every day they're gone. Our plan is to come in, unload the boat, and uh, try to get back out as soon as possible. Right now, I'm offloading the fish, but my main priority is to get the boat back fishing. I'm very antsy when I get shore, especially when the moon's on the rising peak, but I think I'm gonna have issues with three of the uh, four crew members I got, so. I'm not going to wait on the crew ahead of Christmas like this. I'm going to get her Christmas trip if it means that me and Woody go out and do it by ourselves. We've done it before, and we will do it again if we got to. After this offload, we're going to be losing uh, Don and Glenn. I don't feel like taking an ass kicking anymore. My body doesn't need it. You know, I can just stay on land and do my thing. <laughs> Chomps' biggest issue is with his boyhood buddy, Don. After Don went overboard, he realized that he's just not cut out for it. He ain't directly said it, but uh, I could see it. So Don has tried hard, but uh, he's yet to get any better. It doesn't take long for Chomps to start looking for Don's replacement. You want to go fishing with me? Yay! You look like you work hard. Yeah. I think you'll be tougher than some of the crew I got. You want to go? Yes. You do? Yes. You do want to go? Yes. Go ask your daddy if you can go. Yay! Today, Chomps doesn't have to crack the whip. His crew knows the sooner the fish are packed, the sooner they get paid. This will be our Thanksgiving catch. Yeah, these, these fish ought to go, uh, they ought to hit the market right after Thanksgiving, so we'll probably get a little bit of, a little bit of jing for them. That's 400 pounds, yeah. every fitted. All right, now, now. One, three, eight, seven. Three, seven. <laughs> this is a guess because our fish just come off the boat today, but uh, I'm guessing on about a 42 to $44,000 stock at about 16 to $17,000 expenses puts you to about 28 and some change. The Big Eye crew will pocket $10,000 each for this Grand Bank season. All right, Glenn, well, thanks for the, uh, thanks for coming fishing with me. I needed the help pretty bad. Chomps does his best to part with the crew on good terms. All right, Don. Sorry things didn't work out, you know. I don't know Well, I'm saying, I'm sorry things didn't work out, and, uh, you know, I'm, I guess it's just the way that it is. Everybody's not cut out for this kind of work, and, uh, you know, I, you got to understand. I, you got to understand. I'm planning to uh, to come down here and go fishing. You know, and bottom line is, right now the moon is coming up, and we are at the dock, and you are me up. So I don't want to hear no with nothing else about no beating around the bush, because that's a fact. We are at the dock. The moon is up, and you're me up. You knew that. You know, you had all this time to tell me something like that. And bottom line is, Don, you ain't saying thing about not coming back on the turnaround trip. Not one word. Tell me you were turning around on the backside there. This boat does not rotate around crew, period. You know, period. It don't. You know, the bottom line is, well, I don't appreciate it because I went out on a limb because hey, of the Tell me you were turning around. You know, I went out on a limb and I'm getting left hanging. So you can't walk out of it with a good conscience because you ain't doing right. Bottom line. Take that for exactly the way that it is. That's your problem. That's your problem. You need to correct your problem. You just ought to be a man just say you f***ed up, didn't tell me you weren't coming back. Let the boat come in. I just found my last night. You found to turn around in two days and going out. You know I haven't been home. Go home. Go home. And don't come back. I don't want you back. I don't want anybody back that's going to f*** me up on my moon before the Christmas because it's wrong. It's wrong. I take my job seriously or anything. That's one of my friends I've grown up with telling him like that. But I take my job seriously. And that's what it takes, you know, to be able to go. You got a family, 
you're hating. Fishermen are for homeless and people that with no family. But that's the way it is. With the grueling Grand Bank season coming to a close, this is the final tally. Legendary Captain Linda Greenlaw and the Bjorn 2 crew stocked 36,000 pounds of fish. After struggling all season, Chomps and his southern crew managed to bring in a respectable 39,000 pounds. The young guns on the Francis Ann topped the hold with 44,000 pounds. But Scotty and his veteran Eagle Eye 2 crew swept away the competition with an astounding 53,000 pounds. At sea for over three weeks, the Eagle Eye 2, the last of the Grand Banks fleet, motors into port. Now we're in uh, New Bedford Fairhaven Harbor, getting ready to pull up to the dock here. Back home. Veteran Captain Scotty Drabinowitz is ready to put a final exclamation point on this epic season. All right, let's get these fish out of here and get this done with. Fish coming up. Albacore. 107 pounds. This is a real high quality fish right here. Last year, Mike Machado was fishing for swords on Captain Linda's boat. This season, he's buying them. We're into marketing and sales and getting the fish distributed, you know, pretty much from the boat to the plate kind of situation. Big, what's that, about 160? 169. Last season was an experience Mike won't soon forget. Ah! Ah! I don't miss, you know, breaking down getting the crap kicked out of me. But, uh, you know, the, the appeal of it all, I come from, I'm probably third generation fisherman. So yeah, you know, if the whole world fell apart tomorrow, I'd go back sword fishing in a heartbeat. We've got some really nice big eye tuna, and they have the potential to be worth double what the swordfish is. If they grade out real well, that's really, really gonna help out here with the uh, paychecks. Good thick belly. Nice, nice big eye. Real nice big eye. Yeah, oh, a nice, nice, nice fish, fish right there. Yeah, two plus. It's a little cloudy, but it's got bat in it. It's a rich fish. They'll go on sale tomorrow about 6 a.m. in Boston. The tuna prices right now are ranging anywhere from six to eight plus on the really nice fish. There is a little bit of demand because because the market's dry. What's coming up? Bluefin. The big eyes will be sold domestically and bring in $1,000 each, but the large bluefin will fetch a much better price in Japan. <laughs> What's happening? How are you? Good, how are you? Good. 330 pounds. Fish looks a little bit better than I anticipated it would. We'll see what the uh, official grader has to say about it, and um, we'll take it from there. I grade the shape is that like a C plus plus. Yeah. Yeah, because of the this area is a little bit sunk. Okay. Well, that's that's all the good Lord give us, so we gotta take it. Even a mid-grade bluefin will price out at over four thousand dollars in the overseas market. Go make some sushi restaurant happy. Last swordfish coming up. We have a small trip, but we'll still make a. Okay, paycheck. Fish graded out real well. Price is good. So everybody should uh, make a little bit of change. The Eagle Eye 2 brought in 53,000 pounds of fish this year, giving each crew member over $22,000 for the season. Scotty will follow the fish south over the winter, but come summertime, the Eagle Eye 2 will once again be chasing the big money on the Grand Banks. Good man! <laughs> yeah, bills keep coming, world keeps turning, this boat keeps fishing. After the season, Scotty headed south to fish for tuna. 
Chops found a new crew and got his Christmas trip. Captain Linda waited out the winter in Maine. And Slick, as captain again, fished the waters outside of his home port in New Jersey. But the Grand Banks is in their blood. Sword fishing the Grand Banks is a long steam. Yeah, it's 500 pound fish, but it's also days with no fish. It's days when what you're catching is going rail to rail because the boat's rolling so much. It's days when your crew is seasick. These are salty guys. Keep up here. Grand Banks, all BS aside, it's the best sword fishing in the world. Play your cards right, you're looking at 20, $25,000 sets each day. Woo! I kind of take it personally, you know, if I'm not catching fish. Knock on wood, luckily that doesn't happen that often. I'm gonna have a big sword all day long, come on! Oh, when you're on the fish, you don't care what time it is, you don't care what ache or pain you have, or if you're hungry, putting marker after marker, or a big eye on the boat, you're running on pure adrenaline. Yeah, baby! Stoked! <laughs> but come next summer, when the Gulf Stream pushes up against the cold Labrador current, the swordfish will be running again. Then you'll find the longliners steaming back out to risk it all on these treacherous fishing grounds. Nothing makes me prouder than to say that I'm a fisherman. There's nothing better. Ah!